Okay, we're live, Reverend Oliver. Oh, okay. Well, great. Welcome back, everyone, to our weekly webinar, Stopping the Violence, Stopping the Violence in America. It originally started with really dealing with stopping the violence through the influx of guns that are plaguing America. But one of the things that we're finding is, yes, there are a lot of guns here, and maybe we need to curtail those guns and the sale of guns and get a lot of illegal guns off the, the streets. But what we have been finding in our weekly webinar is that the gun is actually an inanimate object and that the people pick them up and it is people who causes harm to their fellow man, their fellow brother, their fellow sister. And through these webinars, we have learned <laughs> that there are different angles and different situations that has caused people to be in the position where they 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 cause harm to others and basically what that is saying is that in order to solve problems we have to get to the root of the problem and when you get to the root then you can find what we call sustainable healing and sustainable change within the person in the community and in the particular environment that they are you know, subjected to that it also causes them to um, behave in, in a manner that uh, is unacceptable to our general society and hurting others. However, we do have a great guest, uh, another wonderful guest here again, who I had the great pleasure of meeting in uh, Korea. And it's interesting, we had three great, powerful Sikhs that were there. He is originally from California. And as we started to speak, he says, yeah, I'm, I'm really into and have been involved in the whole area of Stop the Violence uh, in America and you know, within the communities and, and uh, law enforcement in California. So I'm going to ask uh, Nadia to share with you his bio, but I'm going to attempt to go through his whole name. <laughs> so, and I had a great, great, great uh, experience with him and the other Sikhs that were, were in present with him at that time in Korea. His name is Baha'i Sahib Sepal Singh Khalsa. Hope I got it right. Exactly. Absolutely. You got it. Perfectly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The ambassador of the Sikh, Dahama. So I'm going to ask uh, Nadia if you can go over briefly his his uh, bio so my, we can know who we're speaking, who is addressing us. My pleasure. By Sahib Satpal Singh Khalsa, an ambassador of Sikh Dharma, which means Sikh religion is dedicated to promoting peace and social change. He works tirelessly to foster harmony, cooperation, and enduring peace, advocating for diversity, inclusion, and cultural literacy. Bai Sahib has been recognized for his efforts by the Sikh clergy and holds ministerial responsibility for Sikhs in the Western Hemisphere. Bai Sahib's Commitment to peace is evident in his work with interfaith initiatives and his efforts to address social issues. He, like I said, is the ambassador of Sikh Dharma or Sikh religion. He's the chairman of Guru Ramdas, Sikh Mission of America in New Mexico, and the Secretary of International Affairs for Sikh Dharma International. He's also the director of Miri Piri uh, Academy Amritsar. He's one of the great diplomats of Sikhism who has not only worked for their cause, but dedicated his life toward it. He was given the ministerial responsibility of Sikhs in the Western world and was appointed as chief religious and spiritual authority of Sikh religion in the Western hemisphere. Born in Chennai, I hope I'm saying that correct. Yes. Yeah, yes. Great. 
<laughs> Satpal Singh did his schooling and college in India. After graduating from Summerfield School in 1975, he joined the prestigious St. Stephen's College in Delhi University in the science department. He graduated from St. Stephen's College in 1978, after which he left for the USA for further studies, 1978. <laughs> he moved to the United States in May of 1978. Here he furthered his studies, taking accounting, marketing, and business classes in New Mexico, and later moved to Los Angeles, where he joined a marketing company called GRD Enterprises. Although his careers have been in business, he always felt a deep spiritual inclination, which he now understands is his true purpose. And back to you, Reverend Oliver. Thank you very much. What an impressive uh, bio. Uh, and as we see, his, uh, he's going to address us as a peace advocate uh, and promoting peace and social change. And uh, look forward to hearing from you, uh, your hopes and strengths and how the creator God has been using you in the area of the social change <laughs> so direly needed in our community and in our nation and in the world at large. Welcome. Thank Good you. you. And since Korea, we were in Korea together. Great to see you. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Reverend Oliver, and thank you, Nadia, for that gracious introduction. Uh, I am really, truly privileged and honored to be here and associated with UPF. I have attended several meetings, and uh, I had the privilege to attend this event this last month, in uh, earlier this month in, uh, in Korea. So uh, I, I am, like uh, Nadia, you know, mentioned in my bio, I have been in business. I have done a lot of, uh, you know, uh, own my own businesses. But really, truly, my heart was always towards spirituality, religious affairs, you know, advocating peace, a harmonious life in our communities and societies. And uh, I am I am really truly honored to to represent our Sikh faith um, and uh, also share the insights of whatever I have learned from other faiths all over uh, over these forty five years forty four forty five years that I've been in the United States and uh, what I would like to uh, like today's topic about uh, how how we can prevent violence how we can prevent uh, crime in our societies how uh, religion and spirituality or one's faith can um, help towards that goal. I believe uh, religion does play a very important role in our, in our lives. I would say over 85 to 90% of the world's population believes in one faith, tradition, way of life, or religion, or however they practice their daily lives. So that being said, I think religion and spirituality can play an important role in prevention of crime, prevention of violence in our societies. And I also believe the faith-based organizations, which I believe is one of the largest uh, community societies in the world. Uh, the United Nations had uh, put a figure a few years ago, I read that figure, it, there are over half a million faith-based organizations in the world working towards various causes to bring peace and harmony in, in, uh, in the world, in, in their respective communities. So I believe the faith-based organizations are crucial. The and if they can work together hand in hand with other governmental agencies, even uh, including the uh, law enforcement agencies, state, federal, and, uh, and city level, community-based organizations can work together with the law enforcement and government agencies. And I believe if they work together, we can have a harmonious society. Now, peace, according to what I have learned in my life and shared this, uh, this thought with many other religious leaders, that peace really comes from your inner self, you know. If you are not peaceful, 
in, if there is no peace inside you, if you're not peaceful inside your heart, you cannot share or you cannot give peace to the outside world. So our faith and many other faiths say this, that first be content, be peaceful from inside. Only then you can share that peace with outside. I, I feel that you, you cannot give something to someone unless you first have it. Now, we do see a lot of violence. We do see a lot of conflict in this world. And a lot of that is also actually based on religion. You know, a lot of uh, uh, faith leaders have, have had many thoughts, many meetings together to come up with some kind of a solution where we can accept and respect each other's religion. But coming back to how the inner peace or how we can have inner peace so that we can have peace outside of the world. Now, I have not read or seen or heard any religious scripture or religion way of life that promotes violence or that promotes crime. All religious scriptures, all holy scriptures teach us how to attain peace inside us and also share that peace with outside. Now, there are atrocities, there are crimes, there's violence committed in this society, but this generally does not happen spontaneously. The process leading to these, this violence, this crime, is, is, is the one, the time that we can use to work on it if we get those, those signals or those signs from people committing these kinds of violence. Now, I feel religion can help a lot to active adults, youth, even younger youth, from, from the kindergarten and the junior high school and all that, if we can go in there and share the process of our, real, of our peace inside us and how we can attain that. Now, I have been involved in many, many law enforcement uh, groups. I have gone to many prisons where we have shared this concept of developing inner peace. Well, if you have inner peace, then you will not commit that, that violence. You will not commit that crime. We have used techniques of yoga, meditation, diet. All of these can help enhance or develop inner peace, which will prevent us from committing that violence. Now, media in today's world, media plays a very large point, hates a, a, a very large aspect of, of our lives, how youth, how uh, so the people who are committing violence, how they get to that stage of committing violence. It's, it's probably induced by hate speech. It's induced by inner depression, mental issues. If someone is not at peace within themselves, and we have seen this a lot in the Western world, if you will. I mean, in some of the Eastern uh, uh, countries and where religion plays a very important part in the daily social life of all, all the citizens of that country, we have seen there is less violence in, in places where there is stronger religious way of life or faith-based organization that work in those areas. So violence and crime can be prevented by engaging the religious leaders, working together with the law enforcement agencies, on the law enforcement agencies, I, I regularly at attend a lot of meetings or, or programs put together by various uh, police departments or other law enforcement agencies. And what I think can happen, if we can develop a partnership, the religious-based organizations or the faith-based organizations, if we can all develop a, a strong partnership with the law agencies, invite them to our churches, to our temples, to our mosques, synagogues, and share with them our way of life so that they understand and then they can come into our faith-based organization, the law enforcement agencies, and then they can have weekly meetings, monthly meetings, engage with the youth, share, share the, the uh, law enforcement. You know, I, I'm sure most of the law enforcement agencies have an outreach program where they, they go out to the religious organizations and, and, and we have seen that there's a lot of uh, violence and uh, crime committed against uh, a lot of uh, houses of worship, you know, uh, churches, synagogues, even our Gurdwaras, the Sikh temples have been attacked. And, uh, you know, 
lot of people, innocent people have lost their lives. So I feel that as, as a faith-based organization, as a religious leader, we have a lot of responsibility on our shoulders because faith-based organization and their leaders, people listen to them more, I believe, than they will listen to other community leaders or such as politicians or you know media or, or biz, even business leaders because the faith, most of the, like I said, you know, almost 85, 90% of humanity, uh, you know, believes in religion, spirituality, a way of life, a tradition. So this can play an important part. Now, I also feel that a lot of violence and conflict is due to religion. A lot of people, you know, uh, there's intolerance. And that I feel is because most people do not accept and respect the other person's faith. And that, that's where these interfaith events, such as UPF puts together this event, these events, I think these are very important so that other religious and faith-based organizations can bring their community members, interact with other social groups or religious groups, understand and respect and you know, see what the other person's view of life is. And I think that that will help in reducing the violence. Now, the talking about the law enforcement agencies, because I actively participate with them. Since they, they are strong in their communities, they have a lot of outreach programs. I feel we can, we should invite all of the law enforcement agencies. And I work with the various one of uh, various of them, Homeland Security, FBI, the city, uh, state uh, police departments, and all that, uh, because we should not only they should not only come to our communities when there's a problem. They should come regularly and uh, inspire the youth and uh, participate in the religious uh, activities of a community, uh, such as, you know, even, even I've, I have been involved where uh, we have gone into uh, communities, not, not necessarily Sikh or Indian faith-based organizations. I've gone to a lot of areas where people practice Islam or Hinduism or Christianity or Jewish religion. And we have gone and shared that, you know, instead of spending time having people or the youth spending time on, on going out to bars and partying and social media and other things, why don't they take up, you know, peace marches, they take up beautification of their communities, they take up, you know, cleaning their communities, which is required also. So their focus and attention is, is you know, changed towards positive attributes of the society. And this I feel can help a lot. So, I mean, I am, I am you know, involved with many other uh, peace organizations. I strongly uh, advocate the process of peace, harmony within our communities, within our religious communities, within our societies, with even in businesses and in, in the way that everybody relates to communities together. We, we are, in, you know, working together with many different uh, peace organizations to bring religious harmony among many different religions, you know. So, so anyway, that that was uh, what I would like to share with you. And I'm, you know, if there's any questions, anything, I'd love to uh, answer those. Yeah, thank you so much. Our uh, uh, different, um, our, I don't know which one to call you. Sapao. Sapao, fine. That's my first name, by the way, just for the record. Hi, Sap is a is a religious title. That our oh. uh, clergy gives. Bhai sahib really means brother. You know, bhai ah. means brother sahib means uh, like an honorarium. So bhai sahib is really a title given to me. Satpal is my first name. And by the way, Singh, Singh, anybody Singh with a turban on, you can call him Mr. Singh and he will respond. Singh is our middle name for all the Sikhs in India or, or whatever. Ah. Singh. Okay. And, uh, is another religious uh, uh, it means the pure one Khalsa uh, literally translates so, so I know I have a long name but Satpal is my first name and you, it's okay for you to call me that yeah, Satpal, that's easy that's yeah. amazing, the names are very powerful and have so many profound meanings to them but you know what I really really appreciate uh, your um, injecting in the power of our faith-based communities and religious leaders in healing the violence and the ills of our society. 
Uh, yesterday, if you remember, uh, the vice ex vice president of uh, Zambia, yeah. we heard him re speak. He spoke, and something he said, and something you said, correlated. He said, "You know, we're going to heal the problems of the world. We must have God involved. We must have the higher Creator involved. If we don't involve that higher Creator, God." or ever, whatever we want to call him, we can never solve the problem. And he said, it's just like if a man is thirsty, what does he need? He needs a glass of water. So to quench his thirst without water is the same as trying to heal problems without God. And so I really appreciate uh, what you said, and it's, it's incredibly true that... Um, that's where we'll begin to get our answers from. You know, we have best practices out there, but really the the core is uh, God because of the teaching. And as you had said, you know, the peace starts within me. The transformation starts within myself. However, we are faced with reality of how the environment, as you have put it before, environment plays a very um, deep role in um causing our misthinking, ill thinking, and also uh, our, sometimes our misinterpretation of what religion really is has caused uh, some wars and some pains. But I would like to open up the floor with anyone who would like to share something and to ask uh, any questions of our guest speaker. Floor is open. Hello, I do see uh, our brother Nassar. He is on. He's on. He's here in the East Coast with us. Welcome, Nassar. Good to see you. <laughs> Are they spotlight you? <laughs> Did you want to share something, Nassar? Uh, okay. If, if not, it looks like he's driving or something. I'm not sure. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So why don't we uh, ask? I see uh, Dr. Madeline Clark. How are you? Long time. We <laughs> missed doing- you. I'm doing well. I'm doing well. It's good to see you as well. Peace and grace to all you beautiful souls. And I saw Brother um, Franklin had his hand up. But, oh, um, I didn't see. Okay. But what I will say is this touched me because you're absolutely right. If we don't have internal peace, it's hard to give what we don't have. And, and a lot of, right, a lot of our know. communities are suffering good. internal good. conflict. Yeah. and taking it on the outside. So okay. it made me think about um, our generation and growing up, the values that was given to us for from our parents to respect other people's property, to treat people the way you wanted to be treated. Those concepts has been devalued in our community. And I think as a whole, when we come back to the basics of God's original intent and bring God into our family unit to rediscover what an ideal family look like and what an ideal family consists of and have God as the middle, I think that things will begin to change. The environment that we're in and able to to change it. We talk about our youth, but our youth behavior has to stem somewhere in the family dynamic. So we have to maybe um, have those faith-based institutions uh, engage with the parents that we can bring the family back together as a collective whole. So, but that, that, that peace component is something that 
you have to have internally. And every now and then you have to turn off the TV, you have to turn off the telephone, and you have to turn off the voices inside your head to get in that space to allow God, the Holy Spirit, positivity to just inf infiltrate your soul that you can see things clearly because the media hypes up everything negative. And if you're hearing that consistently over and over and over again, it bombards your soul with negative behaviors, negative activity, and negative thoughts. So if that's what you're, if that's what you're based in, then naturally you will go out and, and, and display negative behaviors. I'm totally convinced that this is a, a spiritual warfare and we have to use the power and the praise of our religion, our faith in God to bind these spirits because remember spirits reign over regions and this region has collectively become the world because it's not just happening in one city or in one state. This violence is happening all over the world. So how do we, how do we arrest that demonic force? How do we arrest that demonic spirit? God said, bind things on earth and it should be bind in heaven, loose things on earth and it should be loose you know, in, in heaven. So we have to start speaking those positive words. We have to start meditating that we can hear and our souls and minds be lifted up in a positive atmosphere that we can see that transition and that change come into fruition because there's just absolutely no, no other way. You said it yourself, the politicians can't do it. The teachers can't do it. We have to have a move of God and reign under the Holy Spirit to be um, collectively uh, moved into our communities with that anointing, with that word and deliver that word in such a way that uh, in layman's terms that they can understand it. You know, we have scripture and we can, you know, uh, Reverend Oliver, we can take it all the way up to glory, <laughs> you know, but what good is a word if a person don't understand what you're saying? So we have to be able to break this down and be the peace and be the love, show the peace and show the love to our communities when we're out there engaging to invite them into the house of God and make them feel comfortable. It's not about what you wear. It's not about who you're with, but bring them all in, bring the family in. Uh, I myself have had some great experience with that. My, um, my, my kids was involved with a game. And guess what I did? I invited them all in. I invited them all in and I gave them love. And I showed them attention and I showed them affection. And in that process, those guys did, uh, dispersed and they went back to their homes and to their families with a changed mind. So we do have that influence. We do, you know, have the words, but we have to be able to put ourselves in position to allow them to receive what we have to give. Okay, I'm, I'm going to stop right there. God bless. And may you continue to receive what thus saith the Lord. Thank you so much, my brother, for your words of wisdom and for your service in the community. Thank you. Hi, Dr. Oliver. It's a nice thing. Yes, sir, how are you? Oh, do you hear me now? Okay. <laughs> Loud and clear. Yeah, okay. Thank you, Dr. Yeah, I, I truly want to thank... Uh, Mr. Sad Paul is uh, he described it and elaborate so beautiful, and he mentioned that you know uh, actually pe people in general they trust in faith leaders about eighty something percent percent, and it's very true you know the politician business other leaders they can this hello oh. But, uh, you know, people should trust in religious leaders. But he mentioned also that, you know, we as religious leaders, first of all, we should be united and cooperate. Then we can figure it out 
how we can reach communities, families, and work with law enforcement, they become much powerful than only one organization like you know UPF now. We took a step and we really want to, as Mother Moon, uh, concern that, you know, how we can reduce the one uh, gun violence and all kind of crime that we see all over the world. But here in America is the center of the world. If you really resolve our problem here, then we're, you know, influence in Europe, Middle East, all over the world. So we have big responsibility, as, you know, Mr. Satpal said as a faith leader, not just preach and educate people about only religious, uh, traditional, you know, philosophies that all we believe in our own ways, but how we can be united, cooperate, and reach to reality of our families, especially, and youth in society. We cannot fight with, uh, you know, with those uh, companies, those uh, drug dealers, so powerful, they have guns, they have money, they can fight with us if you are a small. But we have to reach law enforcement because they have power and the government officials and they can work with us. And as he said, we have to go to them and they can come to us, to our community, to our churches, mosque, everywhere. So it works in both ways. Thank you so much. I appreciate Mr. Satpal. You are a wise man. You say the truth and re based on reality. God bless you. Thank you, Nasser. Thank you. I have a, a good afternoon. I have a question, uh, Singh. Um, I, I'm uh, around many, I'm sorry to say, fundamental Christians that really do not want to engage with other people of other faiths. How do you explain your faith and, and with Christianity, with Christians, how can you help them understand that you're all in one accord? And I would like to understand. Sure, that, that's a good question. And, uh, you know, just for your information, we have gone to a lot of, uh, I, I regularly go to a lot of uh, uh, Christian churches, you know, whether they are Catholic, Protestant, or, you know, all the other, you know, branches or other. Uh, all I, I always share with them the Bible or any other religious holy scripture. All of them talk about peace in one way or the other. All of them talk about having the God inside you. Like the previous, my sister spoke about keeping the God in the center of everything and anything that we do. So for the Christian church, I know they are, you know, probably, I mean, Christianity, uh, you know, the, the largest uh, we know it's the largest religion in the world or the followers has the maximum number of followers. What, what we share with them, we are sick teachings. Talk about, you know, having the peace, seeing God in all, doing good deeds, doing selfless service. And we go and share with them and they also recognize that peace is important. You know, fanatism in any religion is harmful. When any religion talks about, you know, uh, whether it's in hate speeches or, or their religion is the only religion or their way of worship is the only way to heaven or only way to God, that, that belief is not shared by many of us or many of the interfaith leaders because there are different paths to attaining that same God. That's why we have so many different faiths. And that's a whole different topic. And I've spoken on that in universities and all that, that why and how we have why do we have so many different faiths? But we have to understand that all divine paths lead to God. It doesn't matter which path you, you follow, whether you follow the Bible, the Jesus way, whether you follow Islam, Muhammad's way, whether you follow Buddha's, Lord Buddha's, or Hindu faith, all religious scriptures, all religions, all faiths, all traditions, and all, all the ways that Followers, well, there are so many. All of them are okay. All of them are good. None of them is bad. If we stick to the actual religious scriptures teachings, you know, same thing in the Bible. If we stick, uh, if people stick to the teachings of the Bible, whatever the Bible says about, you know, hate, not, not, uh, you know, committing violence, not, uh, you know, always speaking the truth, whatever the Bible's teachings are, if we, if people follow that, then they will not 
you know, they will not commit crime since the topic is crime. The other thing, if the Christians uh, have to understand that they, theirs is not the only way, like I would never say the Sikh faith is the only way, or, or my Muslim brother will not say that, you know, their way. There are so many different paths to you. When you climb the mountain, there are many different ways to climb the mountain. But when you're on the top of the mountain, I always say this, the view of the sun, moon, and the stars is the same for everyone. You know, all the rivers merge into the ocean, which is the infinity. When, when we go to heaven, when I hope all of us go to heaven, you know, if there is one, which there is, I believe. Now, once we reach that, that you know, eternity, when we reach that infinite God, whichever God we practice, you know, when we go in the court of the God, whether it's the Hindu God or the Christian God or the Muslim God or the Sikh God, you know, that God is not going to ask us. We just merge with infinity and we just merge with that internal, you know, power, which we call God. You know, our religion is not going to matter. Like, just like the rivers, all the rivers and the streams flow into the ocean. Once they merge with the ocean, they lose their identity, whether they were the, the uh, Nile or they were the Mississippi River or, or whichever other, you know, uh, river name they may have had. So Christians have to understand that there's, or any path, I, I say this to all my religious uh, faith leaders, you know, that there is not one path to God. There are many different paths, just like we have so many different, you know, languages. We have so many different traditions, foods, culture, uh, ways we work, ways we worship, ways we deal with our family. And if we all recognize that we are children of that one same God, then there will be much better understanding among Christians and other faiths that they recognize that theirs is not the only path to, to uh, God, you know. So that's what I share. And our three, uh, when I go to the, the Christian, you know, yeah. events and all that, I mean, believe me, they, they, they truly are, uh, you know, amazed at, at how Sikh or other religions, Eastern religions, you know, uh, we all share so many commonalities, you know, there are, there are, I, I would even say there are so many commonalities between the Sikh religion and the Christian or the Sikh and the Muslim and so many different. So let us, if everybody focuses on the positive attributes or the commonalities or the, you know, good things that we all practice, then and, and, and ignore, you know, the, uh, the differences, I think we can attain peace in this world. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you very much. That's great explanation. I think Daryl was first and then Barbara Mosley. Reverend Franklin. Thank you, uh, Seek, for that. Your Thank you. Step out for your explanation. Thank you, uh, Sharon, for asking that pertinent question. Let us bring on Daryl Franklin, Reverend Franklin. Can't hear you. You're muted. Oh, thank you so much, everyone. Thank you, uh, Reverend Oliver. And uh, and thank you, uh, Sikh Safa. Thank you so much for your sharing. Welcome. You know, the first time I had an opportunity to go to a worship service um, about three years ago, it was a Sikh worship service. And uh, it was so beautiful. Um, I heard the singing. I did not understand one word, but I was so moved by the spirit of heart. And, um, and I really enjoyed what you said, you know, about how, um, how uh, Dr. Alexander understood this point as well. And that is that how it is so important that the church or spiritual leader be in the forefront of addressing this concern about the rising of gun violence. Because it's really, you know, um, she, you said in so many words, and Dr. Alexander said in so many words, because we are dealing with a spiritual battle. This is not a physical circumstance. This is a spiritual battle. And I love the, the, the point that you are incorporating yoga into your therapeutic practice of addressing 
the ways of going about working in collaboration with the police and, um, and, you know, and starting off your journey into that area of concern with the understanding of bringing that conscience awareness of identifying the path towards getting to peace is to work on acquiring that inner peace yourself. And that is a person who has that, that inner peace, has that capacity to be able to radiate and bring about peace. And that is so true. Um, and you know, and that service, that chic service I went to three years ago, I believe it was four years ago, technically speaking, um, this was in a Lutheran church. And I, I asked the Lutheran minister, I said, I told him how proud I was, you know, of him being a Catholic um, uh, uh, priest or a Catholic minister, that he would allow uh, a sheikh um, worship service to be in his church. And, you know, what he responded to me was that the way I see it is that being a Christian is being Christ-like. And that supersedes all religions. As we understand, Jesus is the son of God. So that means he's the son of Muslims. He's the son of Hindus. He's the son of sheep. And so I love the way you do that. And I just wanted to ask you, um, I have a lot more I can say, but I'm just really inspired by your journey and what you're doing. And have you... Um, uh, been able to teach yoga to members of the police department? Actually, yes. I am actually a certified Kundalini yoga teacher. Uh, you know, the yoga is for your mind, bo body, and soul. We have actually gone into prisons. And before that, we did go into uh, police departments. Uh, we, uh, uh, you know, by the way, I, I, I worked a lot with the uh, uh, TSA employees um, and TSA department also. So we went in there and shared the concept of yoga and meditation because, you know, we feel that yoga, meditation, all these therapies are very crucial to your inner peace. And, you know, like the previous uh, speakers also mentioned how important inner peace is and how to incorporate God. So, yes, to answer your question, we have. And, and on another note, you know, what uh, Reverend Oliver started off with, like guns and, you know, uh, we need to reduce the number of guns and all that. I would even take that one, one level up and I would say we should, you know, we should have a message going out to all the countries, all the heads of the state to reduce. I mean, look at the world today. Most of the, the budget is on defense. Even in, in the U.S. recently, you know, we had an increase in the defense budget. Now, just imagine if all of that money was not spent on arms and arm and, uh, ammunition and uh, developing nuclear weapons and all that. All of that money can go into, you know, we will eliminate poverty. We will eliminate, you know, uh, poverty also contributes to violence and, uh, and a lot of, you know, other uh, problems in the world. All that defense, uh, all the countries spending that money on their defense budgets, that can be used for education, that can be used for upliftment of the uh, particular society or the particular city and country. So, so anyway, I mean, that's another whole topic. But anyway, I know time is limited, so maybe at another seminar. But to answer your question, yes, we have worked, we are working currently also with many different law enforcement agencies and uh, sharing the te techniques or the therapies of yoga and meditation, you know, and uh, uh, and I feel that is very essential in attaining the uh, inner peace, uh, which will entail getting peace outside in the world. Oh, that's great. Absolutely. Right. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Uh, uh, and uh, thank you, Reverend Franklin, for that wonderful question. And uh, those statements that you made, thank you very much. Thank you. Also, we have uh, Barbara Mosley, Marks. Uh, would you like to join us? Ask your question or make your statement. Oh, Welcome. First of all, uh, can you hear me? Loud and clear. Yes. All right. First of all, I would like to 
uh, thank Dr. Sapal Singh. I hope I pronounced that correctly. Yes, correct. Uh, ob obviously, the numerous activities you have undertaken have instructed your presentation, which I uh, certainly appreciate. I have a question though. Um, I have gone to several um, interface meetings and the one thing I notice is um, at an interface meeting, people talk about their faith and their beliefs. Uh, let me jump to another thing and I'll tie it in together. Um, many uh, churches complain about us losing our young people. The problem there is we've had a lot in the religious area at some point, you know, with it. Race Scouts and the, and the Catholics and the Protestants, down south, etc. And many things that dissolution, not only young people, but others as well. So, what I would like to ask you is why not um, apply something more practical? The universe educates us that it's not only practical things come to uh, if we want to have an electric light bulb, give us a light, we have to have a positive and negative force working together. Without that, we have no light. So is there a way or why not find a way for the religions to work together on practical things, not this church working on this thing and that church working on that thing, but the interface with the different religions coming working on something in the community where people can see tangibly the religions are working together. I think this would be a more powerful way of joining people, bringing, bringing real peace because seeing and it is true you said in the earlier part of your presentation, you cannot give what you don't have. If it's not, if peace is, is give peace. But that in isolation is not benefit, benefiting the whole. So I would like to see the religions come together and work on practical things in the community to benefit the people. Then people can never, it can't work for What do you think about that? Uh, yes, thank you. Uh, we were breaking off, but what I could understand, like why uh, different religions or interfaith cannot come together. I think that's another excellent question. And as Nasser uh, mentioned in his uh, uh, remarks, that we need to have interfaith leaders and other community leaders come together and show to the community, show to the world that they are working together. So I, I, in fact, encourage that. I have been trying to, I've been a very big advocate of that, that why don't the various interfaith leaders get together, pick up, pick up a community, pick up a city, pick up a state, and go regularly, meet together, join, join in a peace march, go around the community. We, we did that in India. I did that in, uh, we went to Indonesia. We did some of that there. There was a big problem between the Muslim and some Christian communities. And, uh, you know, so I, I think that is an excellent idea. I think religious leaders must uh, focus what you just said. I think that's a very, very important part that when the community will see various interfaith religious leaders walking together and working and, and bringing the message of hope, bringing the message of peace, bringing the message of God, from their various perspectives, I think that would that would make a very strong uh, uh, will leave a very strong impression on the communities than that will. And I think that's an excellent idea. I do uh, advocate that, and I do you know. And by the way, when our six, uh, you may have seen or you must have seen a lot of six uh, go out and do this selfless service, medicine health camps, eye camps, operations, dental clinics, whatnot, just as on a voluntary basis. So when we do that, we have a lot of other interfaith uh, leaders join us and, and then we do it together. So that I think would be a good way uh, of sending a message from the various interfaith religious leaders. Yeah, after all, we are all one. I promote that very 
you know, uh, I mean, very strongly that after all this, we are all one. Humanity is just one. And I believe the best religion is the religion of you know, if we have love among each other and see God in all. I mean, I always say, if you cannot see God in all, you cannot see God at all, you know. So, so that's a very good question, a very good suggestion. And uh, I will take that uh, to my religious leaders, you know, interfaith leaders. Also, one of the questions, I think you said she was breaking up, the, um, Mrs. Marks. I think one of the other questions she said, just in case, uh, how do you take, how do you see the uh, the spiritual power that the faith traditions bring, even collaboratively, to heal the practical issues that are out there? Oh, yeah, I, I think she was breaking up, so I couldn't hear that part of the question. Well, mm. that, that also the spiritual or the uh, spiritual healing comes when we we invoke God in our prayers, you know. So if jointly the interfaith or even individually or collectively, we all have th these, uh, you know, uh, events or community uh, get togethers where we, you know, I've been to many interfaith events where in, uh, religious leaders uh, start with invocation of their prayers or the main theme of their so i think that that if if we can you know suggest or recommend to the communities that we go and interact with and start off with a holy prayer from each of our different religions that would make a very strong uh, impact on on our inner mind because you know and i've seen in many communities or many uh, interfaith events you know, when, when there are holy prayers being read by religious leaders, everybody gets involved, everybody gets, you know, impacted, everybody uh, gets the benefit of the other person's uh, prayers, you know. So, yes, I mean, to, to uh, pre -pre, uh, I would uh, the spiritual healing is the best, you know, without God, without inner peace, without spirituality, without uh, keeping God in what we do, in the center of everything we do, you know, we will not be at peace with him and then. Hence, we cannot share peace outside. You know. Can I can I follow up that quickly with one? Um, what what I'm talking about is practical uh, exercises like a community project. For example, Habitat for Humanity for Humanity goes out and build houses. You don't have to build houses, but something in the community on a regular basis, where people can see the different religions working together. And so they can see that happening. That will attract more people than even a, mar a march is fine. I've been involved in marches, but that is not something that the community can grab onto. That happens periodically. But something that's happening in the community on a regular basis, there are different religious people, and it doesn't have to be just the heads of the religion but other people from the body of that religion, the community people working together, I think will have a much greater impact and result on the actual community and be instrumental in bringing the religions together. So that, that's an excellent point. And that's what I, I'm saying, practical ways of, you know, not, not only the heads of religion or, or somebody higher up, or even just community members. And, you know, by the way, we have, let me share with you, we did that in India. Uh, the Sikhs went out of their way, and there was a mosque, a Muslim mosque, uh, also worship that was destroyed and damaged. Uh, some, some in the storm, and some by way of violence. And the Sikhs contributed to the development of that mosque, which which sent a message of unity, you know, in the Muslim and the Sikh faith. And and we've done that in India in several places where we have helped build a mosque we necessarily may not you know practice islam but but we'll go out of our way to help our muslim brothers build a mosque we did that you know so so your point is very well uh, I mean, that's very well taken we should uh, practically the community leaders or the religious leaders uh, find a way to find a project or find a project and work together and bring that message of uh, unity you know unification yes Thank you. Yeah. All right. Thank you, um, um, Barbara, uh, for your questions and your statement. Uh, anyone else as we're coming to a close? 
would like to open up and share a few points or ask another question. I would like to say, uh, uh, Satpal Singh, that uh, when you first came on, I was wondering if we had lend you our background. <laughs> <laughs> I say, is that a family fed on the right and a family uh, a UPF and a family fed on the left? If at, at a glance, they look almost the same. <laughs> it's not worse. So uh, especially the left hand side, I said, "Oh, did Dr. Jenkins or or uh, Nassar, you know, uh, lend you our uh, logos <laughs> for the UPF? Anyone else would like to share as we come to our close? Just that you made it all sound so easy, you know. And we know it's not easy, but." You made it sound easy, so that's really hopeful, and I love that. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Well, I, anybody else, if not, I want to thank you again um, for coming on. It was a great pleasure meeting you uh, in uh, Korea. We had a great time, insightful, and we look forward to working with you and more closely, especially in the area of how we can, how we can contribute with one another to helping others uh, acquire peace. And I think that you just you said also that not only within the police force, but you have gone into the prison system and to help them find peace within themselves. That probably was transformative, transformative in their personal lives. Is this correct? Yes, yes, we did go to, we are going to many prisons because, you know, prison, I feel is uh, sometimes, you know, uh, you know, prison men is necessarily not a deterrent for crime. I mean, a lot of times right. when people come out of prison, they they commit crimes again, you know, so so that's why it's, it's so, so we have to take a different approach, you know, that's not the only approach, put them in prison and, uh, you know, so yes, I mean, we are working with them. So anyway, in the end, I, I do want to thank you, Reverend Oliver. I want to thank uh, UPF, their entire beautiful souls, Nasser, Dr. Jenkins, Tomiko, Nadia, all of you, and uh, count me in as a family of UPF for advocating peace. Wherever you need me, wherever you need my you know organization to come support anything that UPF does or will do in the future, I'm there with you, and I, I will promise you that I'll bring my Sikh community with you because I am, you know, I uh, this deeply okay. resonates with me, the, the uh, mission that UPF has bringing uh, peace. And more than that, family, you know, because the Sikh religion also focuses a lot of family. Maybe another time we'll discuss all of those uh, matters. Yes. Yeah, thank you. We'd love to have you again. We would definitely have you again to discuss the, uh, the importance of family within the construct of healing as well and bringing a better society. Uh, okay, everyone, God bless you. I don't know if Reverend Franklin, I just saw it. Thank you, everyone. And, uh, but want to thank you, thank you. Uh, as we come to a close. Let's give him a, a round of applause. Thank you so much. Thank you. For your thank wonderful you. presentation coming from your heart and also from your deep inner mind. Anybody, uh, God bless you. Thank you, Barbara. Thank you, Nassar, for meeting this great gentleman in California. Thank you, Nadia. You always do a great job in, in making this work. And uh, Dr. Uh, Madeline, you, God bless you. <laughs> thank you. God bless Love everyone. You. Thank you. God bless yeah, everybody. Thank you, and thank you yeah. again. Thank you. Thank you so much, everybody. Bye. Okay, Have yes. a great week. Rain yes. and peace. Thank you. Bye-bye. Yes. Yes. Hey, Reverend yes. Brodner. Good to see you. Good to see everybody. Good to see you. Thank you. Bye-bye. All right. Take care. Take care. All right. Thank you. God bless. God bless you. Thank you. Awesome. Get your glasses on the back seat. Good evening, ma'am. Two, three, zero, six, eight. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, thank you. Yeah. I like the idea that possibility of incorporating yoga 
into the healing process of the brain. How do I leave this? And it's not mute. Huh? Can you mute? Yeah, it's okay. Just come and take care of it. Bye-bye. Okay.